Tanya Hoffman's fabulous. Tanya Hoffman's fabulous. Tanya Hoffman's fabulous, fabulous TV show. You're back on my show today. I am Tanya Hoffman, and I'm here with Ton Campbell. Yes. <laughs> so Hi, everyone. We're gonna hear a little bit from Ton in just a minute and find out his story. You won't believe it. Oh my gosh! And by the way, remember that all my guests give incredible things away at the end. So stick around to the end of the show to see what Ton is gonna give you today. Now, oh my goodness, we are gonna have so much fun. There is so much information that will change your life today. And that's what I want to talk to you a little bit about is getting out of your own way. Because as we know, the only reason that most people are not successful is that they themselves stop themselves from being successful. Mm -hmm. Are you stopping yourself? Really? I mean, you got to really look at it. I had to really look at myself in the mirror one time. I'm like, who are you and what are you doing to me? <laughs> and it's a tough question when you look at yourself. You know, I had to look at the way I was dressed and the way I looked. You know, I was hiding myself. And I did everything from my makeup to my hair to my clothes to say, don't look at me. Because it was safer. You know, if you walk around life with no one looking at you, then... You don't have to really deal with people. They don't have to deal with things. But then you don't have to deal with people, you know. And what I found is once I got over all those issues, and believe me, it was tough, you know, to be really honest with myself, that I was standing in my way and I had to get out of my way. Yeah. And so I just started doing everything that scared me. And I know some of you are going, <gasps> everything? I'm like, every, well, okay, I won't jump out of an airplane yet. But, um, and I said, yeah, right? So it is about pushing yourself and being accountable to yourself yeah. that you are going to get things done, even if your stomach's going, ooh, because realistically, once you do it, it is never as bad as you think it is. That's right. So that's why I wanted to bring Ton on today because his story is amazing and I know he's gone through the same transformation and I wanted to bring his story to y'all today. So Ton, so tell us your story. Who are you? How have you changed your world? Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Tanya, for having me on the show. I'm excited to be here, excited to share. I think let me start from the beginning. So I, I came over as part of the last flight out as, of orphans from Vietnam in 1975. Can you imagine what that's like, Tonya? We were flown <laughs> out on a Hercules C-130 plane, massive plane, in banana boxes. So get that. That's how I started my journey to North America. And we were flown out on the Hercules C-130 plane, literally being shot at. Uh, by ground fire, but we safely made it out to Hong Kong, Vancouver, and then eventually to Toronto, Canada. And so that's where I, I got to grow up here in Canada. Crazy, eh? How old were you? I was two years, one month shy of two years old. Oh my and so I, uh, I was uh, adopted into a family here in uh, Cambridge, Ontario, and became the youngest of the six uh, Campbell children here in, in Cambridge. So it was uh, quite a, an upbringing to be brought into the Campbell family, but fabulous uh, opportunities came my way by being part of that family. And uh, I think partly how come I, I am where I am today is because of where I was uh, raised and how I was raised. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it was amazing. So uh, I've had the opportunity to, to kind of share that crazy story of coming to Canada. And then, uh, you know, people were asking me, you know, 
this sounds like a, a TV movie or a movie. I, I mean, every time you share it, it sounds like I can see it on screen. Have you ever written the story out? And I'm thinking, like most people, well, who am I to have a book, right? Uh, what kind of story right. do I have? But um, then I started thinking to myself, okay, the world is asking of it from me, so then I should follow up. And I'm sure you hear that all the time, Tanya, is that uh, people just feel called to do something, and mm -hmm. they pursue their dream. And you're pursuing your dream, and I'm helping to uh, others to share, uh, you know, pursue theirs, but also at the same time, pursuing mine at the same time so yeah very exciting things happening oh my gosh you know and <clears throat> i meet a lot of people and, and i even had that experience of like i'm just little tanya why would someone want to read my book exactly. or why would someone want to hear me in on stage or why would someone want to buy coaching from me you know exactly exactly and it's just this mentality that we get ourselves in and i totally get it i mean i grew up you know, and I think a lot of people do with that kind of, you know, oh, you know, just be quiet. You're, you know, for me, I was always wanting to do more and to be a right. leader. Mm -hmm. And it seems like everyone's like, no, no, no. You know, you're just a girl. You're just this. You're just that, you know. And, yeah. and so we get that in our heads. Oh, I guess I'm we, just. We uh, do. It's self-talk, right? It, it's self-talk. And I was the grade 12 student that standing in front of my uh, grade 12 class shaking with my papers. And you couldn't even hear me speak because I was so nervous. And now I'm able to speak in front of crowds of 10,000, crowds of 32,000 if I wanted to, if it was availing itself <laughs> to me. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm teaching people now how to overcome that fear of speaking in front of one and two people to speaking in front of crowds of 10,000. And uh, you see their change in their, in their mind and their heart, and then you see the courage going inside of them. And all of a sudden, something that they used to fear, they actually love and they're actually energized by it. It's, it's, it's amazing. Absolutely. I mean, even for me, if you had told me, I don't know, five years ago that I would be a speaker. I'm like, what? You're crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I would go through that. whole days without saying one word to anybody because yeah. it, it was easier, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. but wow, it's really missing out on life. And I'm not telling y'all out there that this is, you know, you're just going to be, poof, you're going to be up on stage. It's and a journey. 32,000 yeah. people. Believe. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's run 10 people, five people, 20 people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And um, even now, most of my speaking is front in front of 20 to 30 people. It's just right. kind of the reality of what's out there. Sure, um, sure. So, yeah. and, but get and sometimes, through. you know, sometimes it's even uh, harder to speak in front of the smaller intimate groups than the kind of the larger mass anonymous groups because, yeah. you know, it's just a wash of people. But when you've got 10, 15, 20 people and it's cl up close and intimate, you've got that kind of proximity there that sometimes people get a little bit more unnerved about than the bigger bigger crowds. And yeah. especially if it's a, a group of your peers. So if you're having to give a, a presentation to, you know, your fellow colleagues, um, there's a lot of sense of criticism there or a lot of sense of judgment that's going in there. And uh, I help people kind of overcome that whole sense as well too. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember the first time I was on stage in front of 3000 people wow. and all I could think of is, Oh my gosh, that's 6,000 eyeballs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you just doubled your, yeah, exactly. And that whole notion of, oh, imagine everybody naked, that, that just doesn't work. So don't yeah. listen to that at all. Absolutely. I never understood that. I was like, why do I want to see them naked? You know? <laughs> yeah. I got to focus on what I'm supposed to be talking about, not on that. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so tell yeah. us a little bit about um, how you'd go out and change the world now. Um, sure. Can you give us some tips and techniques? Absolutely. Well, let me, I've had the opportunity to start uh, touring with my, my book. It's called Orphan 32. And it, first of all, it is a story that played itself out in the media. So a lot of people are aware of the story of these 57 children that were brought over in Vietnam. And it's a good news story, right? So people want to hear exciting good news stories. They don't want to be going and walking away depressed or sad. They want to hear a good story. And so that's really where I'm teaching people is how to tell stories, how to keep people engaged. And one of the things is, just what I said at the beginning is, 
people don't go to hear a bad story. They go to hear a good story. So off the bat, you have to change your mind and thinking that I have 30 fans out there, not 30 critics. And when you have a whole crowd room full of people who are actually cheering you on, you get energized by that rather than a whole room of critics that are going to deplete you of your energy. And so you stand straighter, you stand taller, you're more confident in what you're saying when you're playing to an audience of your fans. You imagine if Taylor Swift went out every night after night to a whole bunch of booze, right? She'd be depleted, but she comes out, she just walks on the stage and the whole crowd goes crazy. And you have to almost start before you even walk on stage that that's what people are gonna do. They're gonna come out, you're gonna come out to an applause. People are excited for you there. And so you have to meet that need. That's just one thing that I'm sharing people. And just that has revolutionized people on, in being able to have the confidence to even step foot on stage. I, it's, I, I, the first time I ever thought about it, Ton, that every time you walk, you know, you go up to stage or even just in front of the room, right, in front of the 20 people, they clap. That's right. right. They're yeah, because you're being you. introduced. No, nope, that's right. <laughs> People are clapping. They're welcoming you on the stage, and they're waiting for you to do something awesome, right? So be awesome for them. Play to them, right? And so that's that's what I had in grade twelve. I had all these eyeballs, you know, double. You say, you know, if there's thirty, there's sixty pairs of eyeballs <laughs> looking at me, and, and I'm like feeling that they're looking through me, judging rather than sitting there waiting for me to say something really cool or very exciting. And so once yeah. I was able to change that mindset, and that what really helped me was doing stage plays. I, did, I was in the uh, musical Grease. I was in the yeah. musical Hello, Dolly. And uh, every night, people coming in and really being excited for this play. And, and, and that the standing ovations at the end, that's what you're kind of doing in reverse order. You're imagining them giving you a standing ovation even before you start. Right. Okay, now I have to ask, who, Absolutely. Which, um, which, which character, character? Did you play in Greece? <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, Kaniki. If you know oh! Kaniki, you know Kaniki and Rizzo, the whole thing. That oh happened. yeah, yeah, yeah. Changes my whole view of you now. <laughs> my, claim to, my claim to fame. So the other thing, as I'm touring and I'm I'm really getting out to uh, you know speaking in schools and different Rotary groups, is because it was in the media. Even if you got in to one article in your local newspaper, you can say you were in the media. You can say you've been uh, you know, featured in this newspaper or featured on this talk show or radio or whatever it is, and that just gives you more street cred. Hey, if this newspaper thinks it's newsworthy, then we ought to hear your story, and that's helped me get into just getting into a meeting and saying, okay, tell us a little bit more. And as soon as they hear the story, they say, oh, absolutely, we need our people to hear this story. It's so it's such a good news story. And it's, it's a story that most people haven't heard about the Vietnam War, right? They've heard all the bombing and all that. And I'm pulling a whole different perspective. So, yeah. Yeah, I love the whole concept of focusing on the positive outcome versus, because I hear a lot of people who want to get out and they want to speak, but they want to really focus on, you know, the abuse, the, the right. negativity part, which you can talk about, but then let's round it up with something, you know, uplifting. That's right. And, and I kind of go flow and I teach them, uh, you know, this is something I've learned through uh, some of the networking groups that I've been, dream, struggle, victory. I think we grow up as kids, we have the dream of we can do anything. Right. Then we hit a conflict that may cause us our view or something to falter, or to stumble. You know, maybe it was a, in a case of abuse or maybe it's a, a really tragic event. But then that whole sense of victory is how are we climbing our way out of that situation? How are we becoming better people because of that? And so I use a term called friction traction. Have you ever heard of that before? No, rub your hands together with me like this, right? And that's friction. And if you keep on doing that, it's going to cause a lot of heat. It's going to cause a lot of, uh, you know, um, uh, uneasiness. Uh, it's going to cause, you know, maybe even some pain. But I have the understanding through friction traction that without friction in our life, you don't go anywhere, right? You're just spinning your tires. So you need to turn that friction into traction to move you forward. 
you know use that friction that you have use that struggle like the butterfly does to strengthen its wings so when it's out of its cocoon it can fly without yeah. that struggle without that pain it would just it couldn't it couldn't go anywhere right yeah i find that for a lot of even for my clients and people that i know i'm always telling them you know you got to fail and they're like, oh, I don't want to fail. I says, just learning what doesn't work so that you can find what does. Absolutely. You know, it's yeah, not yeah. like there's a formula. You put everything in and poof, it's all perfect. Yeah, that's got right. My, 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 my hero, Michael Jordan, you know, you've probably heard this uh, quote before, you know, I failed over and over and over and over and over again. And that is why I succeed. And he took, so he's taken more free throws. He's taken more, you know, jump shots. He's taken more and anything than anyone else. Right, and he's missed more times, but because he's missed more times, he's had more success in the times that he has exactly. got those in, right? And so, uh, it's going through that, it's fail forward, you know. Right. Everybody has to go up and stand up and, and speak in front of people. And the first time you go, it's not going to be perfect, you're going to stumble over your words, you might stutter a little bit. <laughs> the second time's going to be a little bit better, right? And soon you'll learn not to say the ums or the ahs or the you pause instead of saying those things and, and you fail forward, right? And you're just going to get better and better and better. Yeah, I love that. You know, especially in the realm of speaking, you know, getting out there, getting your message heard. Absolutely. You know, I see a lot of people that they try it once. They're like, oh, it didn't work. I didn't, no one bought anything. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, or a video or social media, you know, I posted on Twitter once and I didn't get anything from it. I'm like, <laughs> you got to keep doing it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and we were talking about it a little bit earlier. Having a conversation with someone is building a connection. And so I like to have conversations with my audience. I don't like talking at them, right? I like to engage them and dialogue with them make them laugh right after they've been crying right and getting them back in and getting them engaged by by talking with them sometimes it's just by a look maybe it's just a roll of the eyes maybe it's just laughing at yourself whatever it might be that is natural for you to have that conversation with the with the people that you're trying to enfold into the story make them part of that story so right. imagine being a mother of a two-year-old child that goes missing. Can you imagine your heart, how that would break? How you'd panic as to where that child is. And you get them to put themselves into the shoes of the characters in your story. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I think storytelling is not only the most important part, because it's something that people can hold on to and remember, um, but it's also the technique that I think separates you from just teachers mm -hmm. and really a speaker, right? Yeah. Let me, if I may, just hold up. This, this is the cover of my book. And if you can see, thank you. If you can see the, the picture, that's me when I was two years old. Mm -hmm. But I'll ask students, I'll say, what do you think is going through the, the mind or the eyes of that child in that picture? And then they'll say a whole bunch of few things. And then I'll say, well, that was me when I was two years old. <gasps> right? And they just, wow, you know what I mean? And they've kind of taken on what I might have felt like coming to this new world where I don't speak the language. I don't look like anybody else, but I grow up and it's what I call a banana, yellow on the outside, Asian looking on the outside, but white on the inside. I, I, I taste and, and I sense and I take in the world like any other Caucasian child would, but I on the outside look like, you know, an Asian would. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Different, eh? Different. And that's the response I get when I say banana. I'll get them <laughs> laughing, right? So I, I pull my, my audiences yeah. from crying literally to laughing. In, in well, and I'm always like really upfront with people about the situations, right? So I do a lot of speaking where I'm the only white chick in the whole place, you know? <laughs> and uh, from, you know, African-American to uh, Asian to right. Hispanic, whatever. Fantastic. And so I'm always just like really upfront with it, you know? And uh, even at the last event, it was hilarious how that um, opportunity that came yeah. be in front of Haitians, right? It was wow great group of people boy they love to dance and everything mm. so of course 
you know, they're all like doing this beautiful dancing. And so I get up on stage. I'm like, okay, so I'm going to do my little white girl dance right now. And they all just crack up. Right. So you just <laughs> use fantastic. those opportunities yeah. when you have them, you know? <laughs> absolutely. So it's been a journey. Absolutely. And sometimes when people say no, they don't, you know what I mean? They're not saying no to you personally. And that's what I've had to learn is that maybe their schedule is full. I had a no when I was at one school, but then eventually I got uh, three days later an email saying, hey, we stopped by, you know, we just discussed it. We don't have room this year, but we'd like to set you up for the fall semester. Right. So, so it's not always a no. It may just be a no right now to a yes later on. And Absolutely. so keeping the door over, right? And I'm sure you've taught people don't burn bridges. Keep oh. those doors open. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And you really have no idea where it's going to lead. And I always reach out and talk to people, uh, you know, further than that. You know, how can I help you in not just today, but in the future too? Sure. Yeah. And so even if it doesn't mean that you're going to immediately get booked or immediately going to have someone buy your book or whatever it is, yeah. just leaving that door open is That's huge. Right. That's right. Yeah. And, and when you come in, as, as you're saying, with a heart of service, that you want to do something for those students, right? You want to help them overcoming this, this bullying environment, or maybe it's their employees and you want to move them forward in their, in their productivity, whatever it is, is going to be their takeaway. And if you can really encourage whoever your contact versus this is going to be the takeaway for your, for your people, for the audience that you're speaking to. Um, yeah, usually they're, they're going to keep you in mind. They're going to have a time where they say, Oh, that guy who stopped by, he was going to do this for us. Well, let's give him a call, right? And pull out your number and give you a call. So. Exactly. And it's all timing, you know, and you never know when the timing is right. And so you've just got to be prepared for it. Right. And I've had opportunities that I would have never have had if I had gone in trying to make that opportunity happen. So, right. you know, don't always go in with the end in mind. You know, yes, be aware of the end That's if right. you know it. Because a lot of times you don't even know what the end <laughs> is. You know, you don't know who knows who, what they do, what they do on the side. You know, exactly. it's just incredible. Yeah, and, you know, I, I, I've, I've learned the, um, how you're the saying that a, a farmer does not uh, harvest in the same season that he plants. You know, that's a bonus if you get a, a, an event right from the first connection, right? Right. But often it's just a matter of it's a season of planting a whole bunch of seeds and putting yeah. – information out there and then all of a sudden letting that germinate and then all of a sudden getting the content. And I think that's the problem with marketing for most people is you, you have to put your name out there. You got to get your message out there and over and over and over and over again that's for right. something to happen. Yeah. Uh, it was a perfect example of a lady the other day. She was a member for, with the public speakers association and she had done the virtual events and she had done some of the different things that we offer. And she contacted me and her, she had gone through her whole year membership and she's like, I don't think I'm going to renew. And I'm like, really? I mean, you've done a lot and you've got all of this momentum mm -hmm. and I know I've heard buzz around about you. And she's like, it's just not working and I'm not getting anything out of it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, so I don't understand that. Right. So she went ahead and left a week later. I mean, literally, I think it was like five or six days later, yeah. I got a, an email from someone. They're like, hey, we're trying to find a lady that was on one of your summits. Oh, wow. And I'm like, oh, you know, I don't. She's not with us anymore. And they're like, oh, she quit? Because people do not like quitters, right? Nope, nope. And they're like, darn, we've got a six-figure training oh. that we needed oh. her to do. Ah. Uh. Yeah. And of course, I'm like, well, let me connect you to some people because they didn't want her number anymore. No. They wanted somebody who was proactive and still That's doing. Right. That's right. And so, right. good lesson. I mean, learned. How horrible. Hard, <laughs> hard lesson learned there. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, how sad is that? You know, so, so yeah. you know, I see it for a lot of people. They, they quit right before their success. You know, mm -hmm. and um, most people just don't push through. And it's always like that the, when it gets real mucky. You know, yeah. <laughs> when you're really having to, you know, yeah. twinge hard. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's and that's why, you know, I've, I've titled my tour Hope for the World Tour because you're not going to hope when it's easy. 
<laughs> you need to have hope when it's hard. You need to hang yeah. on to that hope when things are hard. And so, you know, I'm in these schools and kids are going through some hard times. I say, hey, hold on. You don't know what tomorrow is going to be like. You don't know what doors are going to open. You don't know who you're going to meet. You don't know what phone you know, call you're going to receive tomorrow. And that's when I share my story of this phone call on this you know, Friday night that just literally changed my life, yeah. right? And then can, kept on going to another phone call that happened in January of 2007 that changed my life again. Like how many times can your life just change? But it does over a phone call. And if I didn't have, you know, if you don't just go from day to day to day hoping that tomorrow is going to be even better, something amazing could happen, you know, you, you'll lose out exactly on opportunities like this lady did. And that's unfortunate. Yeah. If you do. I know. I know. I hate it. I just broke my heart. It's like, ah. Yeah. So but everyone out there, hold on. Yeah, go through the muck because you get to that other side, and believe me, the other side is so nice. You know, but you gotta go through the muck sometimes. I know. <laughs> Tony, you're you're amazing at this. You surround yourself with people, a team, you know, of people that you mentor, but people who are also going to mentor you and oh, yeah. lift you up and keep you going, and and kind of be those cheerleaders on the sideline. But sometimes they have to get off the sideline, and they literally have to pick you up and walk with you, and and hold you up during some of the hard times. And so, yeah. if you don't have a team like that, if you don't have a group like that, go find them, go network with people, and stay with people who are going to encourage you, not tear you down, not criticize you, not, you know, keep on looking at the bad points, but people who are going to move you forward. And sometimes that takes constructive criticism, but you know that they're doing it because they care for you and they want the best for you and they want to see you move forward, not to try to hold you back. Yeah. Always find collaborators, not competitors. You know, uh, you yeah. surround yourself with fabulous people and you move each other along, you know, cause it's almost a Montessori school type of mentality. You know, there are people you're going to be able to mentor and help. And there's other people that have, unique opportunities and knowledge that you don't have that exactly. will help you move along. Complimentary. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. I know that you're giving away something amazing today. So can you tell everybody what you're giving away? Well, what I've done is kind of put a one sheet together of just kind of the life lessons that I've learned of how, you know, I've got my book out and started promoting and really just some of the principles that I'm, I, I, I kind of fly by myself in order to keep moving forward to, to start, you know, seeing and generating the success that I've, I've been able to realize in my life. And so I want to share that with people because I, it's, it's a treasure that you don't want to hold on to your own. You want to give it away. And so that's the whole principle of, of giving. So I want to give that to people who, who come to my website, orphan32.com slash free. Uh, and in there, you're going to see uh, the PDF of the, the principles that I go by. Awesome. Okay. So it's orphan. That's a P-H. PH, yes. <laughs> 32. Right. Yep. Dot com, com slash, slash free. Free. Absolutely. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Well, I really appreciate you being on today. Well, it was uh, amazing. And, you know, again, tomorrow could be your day. So have hope and go and make it your life amazing. Perfect. So everybody, make sure you book, you know, Tom for your next event. Come to the public speakers association.com. So public speakers with an S association, all spelled out dot com to find out more about getting involved, getting your message out there, getting your message heard. You know, we really want to make it an amazing year for you. We also have our upcoming conference, so make sure you check that out June 14th through the 17th. Woo! And, yay! And we're going to have amazing people and it's all about connections. And we're actually going to have people that are going to be booking people for their radio show, TV like this one, um, and others. We've got people booking for conferences, summits, um, virtual events, all kinds of wonderful things. So make sure you come. That website is public speakers with an S conference.com and jump in on that we've got the early bird special still running right now you don't want to miss that so thank y'all all for coming today we expect you to come back ton make sure you come back on our show again we would love Absolutely. that and yeah. everybody have a fantastic rest of your day Take Bye. Care. thanks so much